Hey everybody, it is Wednesday night, August 17th. We just got out of Baltimore Soundstage and we saw... Fuck, what's the first <laughs> band? Oh my god. Wow, uh, keep that in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we just uh, we just finished seeing um, Era headlining, uh, Alpha Wolf co-headlining with uh, friends from Australia. Actually, no, Alpha Wolf is from Australia. And um, Invent Animate opening and thornhill as the second band opening and for a wednesday night i actually had no idea that this was going to be very packed this was very good i actually really enjoyed today's show yeah we walked in when invent animate and we got the tail end of their set their last like song and a half or something and the the whole venue was already packed yeah it was just like really strange on a it's like, wild um, no yeah. like F- slowly filtering in or anything just Mm-mm. immediately packed yeah i th- I didn't realize all these bands had like such a great following like i think era did a really good job uh having these bands on tour with them this was like th- uh like th- the third before their last show i think that's what they said yeah this was like the fourth to last or third to last something yeah. and it every time i've seen era i've always seen kind of their fan base like grow even more popular and i also see their writing as a band and like chemistry grow and i i honestly think they just have a song structure formula down that it's never boring to be honest it's oh it's i don't know what they do what what drugs they're on uh, <laughs> uh what kind of coffee they're drinking all of the above but like every album they crank out always seems to be like such a banger so catchy we've seen them numerous times now and just going off the top of my head i want to see it at least four or five times and they've always been really solid i i prefer them live uh to their studio albums they have a really clean sound live oh yeah like, everything's agree. punchy and comes through clear mm-hmm. not like i've never heard them do like a muddy set Mm-mm. their vocalist is killer yeah he's also a bolt native he he belts it out and is still really um coherent and punctual Mm -hmm. like it's so easy to discern what he's yelling even though he's just screaming it out i agree and i like every time they come around he is always saying he's from baltimore he's always glad to be back home which is very kind of like uh it's humbling to like know where you came from like all the monuments all like the spots i feel like once you're back at your home all the memory starts flooding in and when they're before their last song he shouted out his mom who was sitting on the side it's cute in the like vip section they have the spotlight going or everyone cheered and went crazy Mm -hmm. i mean i think it's really awesome when you have like a family member especially like your mom or like uh if you have like your mom or dad or both your parents visiting you at like in a basically a job that your offspring gets to do i think that's even like more rewarding as a parent like you get to see like your offspring living their dreams and like pursuing what they worked for I always imagine it's probably pretty funny too, seeing them successful in a sort of like alternative or like underground genre. Like mm-hmm. you just got to imagine those like beginning years where they quit their full time job and it's like, yeah, I'm going to go scream for a metal band. Like, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. And I wonder how that talk went too. like, uh, I mean, with something like music is something you really got to put your all in. You can't just like as uh Ron Swanson said, you can't half-ass two things. You got a whole ass one thing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but yeah, just every time we've seen Era, I didn't we were kind of even uh con- contemplating like, yeah, maybe we could leave early. We've seen him enough times, but like the energy was still there. I didn't have a problem like staying up. I didn't and Brent didn't have a problem staying up, and we we're just kind of like, let's just see it thirty end. I, at this point, that's now a factor in our rating system. Yeah, <laughs> is alertness, and if we, it keeps us awake, yeah, right? But like, I don't know, keeping us awake. So there's many different factors for that. But like, um, for Era, it's just like the energy was insane for the whole show. You mentioned their songwriting; they really have improved. Like, like they came back for the encore and played Hybrid Earth. Yeah, and it's a banger. It's a heavy song, but it was just it was almost like a whiplash. Going back to that compared to hearing like their newer stuff from Neon and uh, I forget their other latest album. Uh, Drift and then there is uh... Drift, Neon, and then their latest one. I can't remember. Don't worry. I got it. Oh, self-titled. Oh. It's just their self-titled album. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah. Um, so from start to show, uh, 
I'm sorry, Invent Anime. I was very happy. To, I really wanted to see you, y'all, but um, unfortunately, Baltimore traffic got the best of us, and we were pretty hungry. So uh, we went to Poyoteca, and we got some food. Yeah, you mentioned them that you had heard of them before and had liked them, and we put some of them on the car on the way in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always hard. I mean, we we both work full time, and then leaving work and then heading over to a show. We usually always pretty much miss the opener, get the tail end of them. I know that kind of sucks for a concert review show, but it's a fact yeah. of life. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, like, the Baltimore traffic sucks. And I, I thought we left at a pretty decent time, to be honest. Yeah, like, we made good time. I, like, I got home and I was just running around the house. I was just sprinting. Anyways, anyway, um, so yeah, so sorry, Invent Animate. I really wanted to see you, but uh, life got the best of us. We were hungry and traffic got to us. So we're going to start off with Thornhill, which I was actually pretty excited. We were talking about, like, I was informed that Alpha Wolf and Arrow were playing. I didn't know the openers were actually Thornhill and Invent Animate. So once Brett brought up Thornhill, I was like, we can't miss that. I They're actually pretty good. So. The way I kind of describe Thornhill is kind of like um like kind of like 90s 90s not classic rock but like uh on the cusp of modern they are modern metal but like uh they had that very very much like Deftones influence but they had like more pop dream pop vibes to them and, and honestly like their heavy ribs felt more like an accent versus like the main attraction to their songwriting I kind of really like that. A lot of their effects today, I, I noticed with a lot of bands today, they had a, like a huge high pass filter vibe to them to kind of like um, create that dramatic effect of like something is th thinned out, but still very coherent. But then like once the full volume of the band comes along, it sounds way bigger than uh, what you thought it was going to sound. It, it, in fact, it might even sound louder than... Uh, what it was originally even though you already heard it but like when those ba when bands kind of use like a high pass filter especially for like um i guess epic parts i guess i can describe it you know like uh when every instrument when every member kind of stops breakdowns um, or crescendos yeah yeah they kind of used it like that where it's just kind of like something epic's about to happen so i also noticed like the way they look too they're very much like kind of have these boy band vibes yeah, I was I was thrown for a loop when they first went on stage because I I just didn't know what to expect for them. I I don't even yeah I don't even I feel like it comes off as an insult, but when they first came up, just the way they were dressed and their look, I was just like, my first thought was just yeah, just that they looked um like uh, pretty boys or something or like boy mm -hmm. band or something. And then sort of as they performed, sort of the vibe I got was almost like the kind of classical what you consider like rock star yeah like longish hair you know the the singer did mostly clean vocals he was like they're all kind of like not sharply dressed but they had like suit jackets i mean you know more so than like a grungy outfit or something they they uh had like black long sleeve button down shirts and like they look very clean like even down to the haircut it gave me like like parted in the middle vibes but like the singer definitely had more of like that uh appeal to him not quite i wouldn't say sex appeal but like he had more of that like confidence and like a uh, swagger to him that's the exact word i was going to use yeah he he performed with like a rock star swagger just like hip swaying you know keeping the mic stand with him most oh, metal yeah. vocalists they just have it handheld and just sort of like cup it and belt it out he was kind of like using the mic stand and yeah yeah they had actually, like, their songs, like, I wouldn't even say it was, like, heavy. They are heavy, but they were more dancey. They were definitely more dancey, like, definitely felt more like a club with, like, guitar and mo with modern, heavily distorted guitar. And then, like, their breakdowns felt more like grooves. They felt more, like, just dancey, just kind of, like, want to keep your, keep your body moving versus, like, Alpha Wolf, like, have also heavily distorted and gated guitars but it's more destruction destruction with alpha wolf but uh thornhill kind of kept it classy i kind of want to say is classy poppy i can see them playing arenas to be honest like the way they performed and like even like their uh ban banner they had like a little disco ball right behind their name and i was like you know i am getting those exact vibes 
Yeah, it was like mostly clean vocals, definitely poppy, kind of airy, dreamy sometimes, like Deftones-esque. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, occasionally put throw in a growl and have some like, yeah, ba- I, I, I refer to it as like bouncy breakdowns. But mm-hmm. yeah, definitely groovy would be applicable too. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess dancey too. Like, yeah, definitely dancey. Because like, even though I was jerking my body, it's more like it was jerking it for like a rhythm. For rhythm, kind of like you want to like they were rhythmic. Yeah. I, I feel like th- their songs did a pretty good job of building momentum, mm-hmm. of kind of like um slowly building up the energy and kind of adding more. So then by the end, it was kind of more bombastic. There's more going on. I would recommend this to people who don't venture out into like heavy music, like that, or even like maybe even listen to classic rock mostly. Like this is kind of like a great gateway to like uh blending the two uh uh what's like generations together not that they're that similar stylistically but they kind of kind of reminded me of like Don Bro- Don Brocco oh, or Don, Don Bronco Bronco Don yeah, Bronco that one time we saw them where they were just like metal adjacent like kind of heavy they sort of fit into the scene but were kind of odd but just mm-hmm. like so energetic they made up for it mm-hmm. yeah they were kind of like Thornhill is almost like the kind of pop or classic rock equivalent of that. Mm -hmm. They were fantastic. Like, I actually just got into them like a month or two ago. I'd like to thank Abby for that. Uh, Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it because she was at work. But um, definitely... I know she would have enjoyed today. She would have enjoyed it for sure. Also, uh, Thornhill, I had looked them up. They're on the label UNFD, which is the same one as North Lane. It makes sense. Both from Australia. I think, like, you know, it's funny. Like, uh, I always think, like, Australians have a hard time getting visas for work, especially, and they have a hard time. Like, uh, I think North, North Lane canceled this yeah, year. We, yeah, we were going to go to that show. Uh, I think also at Soundstage, we were really looking forward to it. But yeah, they canceled because of visa issues. Yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, I feel kind of like blessed to see like Hiatus Coyote, Thornhill and Alpha Wolf, all like Australian acts able to make their way like through the visa gap, you know? Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Australia is like starting to become, or well, not starting, but like they're they're definitely holding a lot of gems. In that uh that country that continent. Yeah, they got a solid uh metal metalcore scene going on. Absolutely. Which leads us into Alpha Wolf. Oh yeah. As mentioned, also from Australia, Th- they were the act I was most looking forward to tonight. I actually don't have many notes on them. I just have same. <laughs> li- here are my notes verbatim. Caveman core, stupid heavy <laughs> crowd erupted. Those are my notes. Like literally, it just. It, caveman core it literally just like reduced me it was it was what i wanted to be it just it was stupid heavy mm-hmm. you know played songs i was looking forward to i was kind of like binging their um latest album waiting for it and then their closer was akudama mm-hmm. and yeah i took video of creep and akudama and it's just stupid heavy it is really stupid heavy <laughs> You mentioned earlier they kind of have that very similar frontier sound and uh i noticed with all these bands today actually um they were all using their uh daws to like play a clean set like to trigger the effects on time so kudos to them to always playing on time so those effects can actually work and give the the crowd give them the effect that they want to give the crowd i like that you can provide the like technical musical terms and then earlier i described it as bricked up tone yeah <laughs> it was i was like yeah they're bricked up like frontier yeah and i was literally like uh once i like started hearing like their tone i was like oh, okay very trebly very uh <laughs> very gated like their sound is very gated um which i guess for people who don't understand uh most guitar rigs tend to be noisy especially with that amount of gain so uh most bands would use a noise gate to kind of cut the noise 
and some bands even take it further to kind of add more of a choppy element to it. So it's like very, it's very st- like staccato. So oh, like, um, that makes sense to me. Yeah. When I've edited audio before, I've put on limiters mm-hmm. and there's like a weird thing. I mean, this is a tangent, but like when you make memes <laughs> where there's that blown out audio, mm-hmm. it's like you can limit it to like negative 12 decibels, but mm-hmm. then just crank the gain up. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't actually blow out your ears, but it's clearly like an unnecessarily loud noise. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think uh, Alpha Wolf had the most energetic crowd for the whole show. Like, there was like two wall of depths for that band, and like I love how the guitarist, uh, one of the guitarists was wearing like a, like a Fox jersey, like Fox, like the brand, uh, biker jersey, whatever. Motor, yeah, motor that's right. Them. And uh, he was just kind of like going up on like, um, I guess they brought their own like st- not stools, but like uh, whatever their own steps to kind of like make themselves look taller. But like he was doing these uh movements where he was just kind of like waving his finger at the crowd saying no 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 it ain't (laughs) over yet it ain't over yet and then um the vocalist came up jumped on like to the little stool whatever whatever stand it is and just kind of like had the crowd split like wall of death wall to wall twice and i was so i mean i i think i'm a little like um retired into the mosh pit to be honest i might i might go back from a sugar but like i feel those are for like favorites but my body's like no you gotta work i know i wanted to go in the pit um yeah the guitarist he would like hold out his guitar into the crowd and let them kind of like grab it or strum it and stuff yeah it was pretty cool also i think he would wear a face mask even before the pandemic Mm kind of like some of the dudes in north lane they just kind of had it aesthetically Oh, yeah, I remember that. And I guess now functionally. Functionally and aesthetically. I mean, it kind of gives, like, a really tight vibe, I'm not going to lie. It gives more of, like, a tougher vibe. Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, the energy for Alpha Wolf was really high. I think we even recorded some clips. Yeah, I will splice in some clips. Also of note, this entire show, there was nonstop crowd surfing. Oh, yeah. Even with Invent Animate. I mm-hmm. mean, opener to era. Every single band had a constant stream of uh, crowd surfers. And you could tell because the staff had to shine flashlights on them to notify the guards at the front to get them. And there was just constantly like spotlights on the crowd. Shouts out to Soundstage having their crew on top of that. But Alpha Wolf, y'all killed it. It was awesome. And I think uh, Era had like great energy too, but it was more like, I guess happier. It seemed more less aggressive, happier energy, more like. Sort of mm -hmm. reminded me of like a periphery show. Yeah. Kind of. A lot of um, singing along to songs and also heaviness. Mm-hmm. I think like some years ago, I referred to them as like the thinking man's breakdown band or some something like that. The, the thinking caveman. man's like metalcore band. Because <laughs> yeah, because they they kind of like they kind of toe the line between um, just like super heavy gent, but also like have a some proggy elements. Mm-hmm. I love this show today. I actually was, I kind of was joking with him. Like we should have like a playlist called weekend weekday warriors. Like weekday shows sometimes surprise us, but most, most times they don't like, we kind of know like the type the generally the type of crowd we'll get at a uh, weekday shows. But today I didn't realize like there was a lot of hype behind. I was actually kind of surprised today didn't sell out. It was pretty packed. Yeah. Like I got my ticket out the door. Cause I, me and Brent talked about it. We were like, yeah, and weekday shows don't really sell out, so I was like, I don't, I don't want to pay the ticket fee, so I'll just get it at the door. But I was, I looked inside, I was like, I hope there's a ticket left. But yeah, um, uh, I have nothing else to say, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I guess I'll just go with score. I guess I'll do eight point five. You know, I have the same exact score actually. Eight point five for everything. Super solid. Uh, great vibes wowed me a lot for a, for a weekday and just the energies were high and just great crowd paint and um we loved it yeah every band was solid i'm super excited to have finally seen alpha wolf oh, for the dude, first yeah. time that was super fun i was i didn't deep dive as much as um as you did i i listened to them before but i never like took a deep dive and i think i'm starting to get to the point where like 
I'll listen to it. I think it's good, but like I think once I listen it to once I listen to the band live, I get a better idea if I generally like the album more or like if seeing them live makes me want to listen to the album more. I get that. I've I've definitely that's been how I've been getting into bands more so because I feel like if a band is good live, you can get into their studio albums. Whereas it's kind of disappointing when you vibe with their albums and they're not as good live. Yeah, I agree with that. So I think overall, I think we generate generally like to see like the ratio like how much the album influence our decision seeing the band i like production quality is a huge factor oh yeah today oh, every same. every band had great production quality like let me talk about the lights for a quick second like yeah me- era's lights their lights were like neon like bliss neon goodness it they were soft too it like, was really cool it kind of made me feel like i kind of felt like i was looking at clouds a little bit with like they weren't that bright they were soft like easy to look at they weren't harsh despite like the colors being like blue and kind of like magenta and pink and then like even like their floodlights honestly it felt homey it felt homey and then like but alpha wolf had like red lights almost the entire show just like red means danger yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 it filled out the venue it made it seem like a bigger show than like even what the smallish venue could hold Mm mm-hmm uh, I don't really remember. Um, actually, no. Thornhill's lights are really good. They definitely have more of a club poppy vibe to them. Yeah, they they kind of had like bathed it all in like yellow goldish. Yeah, I guess like more flash. Had that disco ball, like you said, for yeah. most of it. And Invent Animate had more of like I guess like for like the it was like waves. Seconds. Yeah, they were good. It was like for the last song that we saw, it was super sick. I still was very like impressed. Now I have nothing to say. You got anything else to say? I have now. I have nothing, nothing to say. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time. It was super it was fun. Great. Yeah. I thank you, Sound Stage, for holding the show. Whoever booked the show, th- uh, shouts out to the touring managers for booking the show at Sound Stage. Yeah. If I haven't, I. I mean, I think I said it before. Back before we were even doing concert reviews, when we were just reminiscing. But yeah, Sound Stage is like by and. God, what's the term? By and far, whatever. By it, far it's, and above. Yeah, it's it's for sure the venue I go to the most. It's like a second home. It's like almost every concert I've gone to has been here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love the venue. Thanks to all the staff for hosting, mm-hmm. being super attentive and awesome. This is Walter signing off. This is Brent signing off. All right, good night, y'all. Thanks for listening. Peace. Bye. Maybe I'll cut this whole part in at the end and call it like the tangent. We can, time. we can just go like, whoa, 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 and then just like, go yeah. fast forward. Tangent time or yeah. something, yeah. Mm-hmm. I put on the latest uh, Jason Richardson album that I didn't even oh, it's out realize when it came out. Yeah, just called Number Two. Oh, wow. I mean, that's a tangent, but yeah, I liked it. I, I liked it more. I haven't finished it, but I already have liked it more than his previous one because that first one of his was just a lot of... It was good gent, but it was a lot of technical wankery. Mm-hmm. And this one feels like it has some more bona fide song structure. There's just more uh, dynamics and nuance. There's just more interesting things going on than just sort of like blunt mm-hmm. mastery or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a virtuoso. So like um, him having that first album kind of like of a wankery. What, what, what are we talking about his album? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll save that for another day. <laughs> Also, he was paired with Luke Holland on the drummer, which oh, I'm yeah, not yeah. familiar with him, but it was pretty tight. Yeah, uh, Luke Holland is a, is a, was a YouTube drummer. Now is like basically, I mean, I guess he still is a YouTube drummer, but like now just does drums for um, Jason Richardson. I don't know he's done, uh, what's that one band? Uh, the Word Alive. He's done drums for them in the past. So. Oh, and they're the ones that had all that trouble, right? What? Like, <laughs> no, not like bad trouble, just like, like someone like lost a limb and their like truck was robbed or something. Oh, that's the ghost and, well, uh, um, the, the ghost inside, uh, the, that drummer lost his leg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, the band yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of. And then now I think he's still drumming. Uh, like kudos to that guy. He loves drumming. Hey everybody. This is Brent. It is the morning after the show. And there was one other thing I meant to say that I completely forgot last night. Just a quick little story. It was amusing. Uh, we were outside taking a break, just like chatting up with some people, and I couldn't help but overhear um, there was this really like large, muscular man uh, standing near me, and he was telling a story about how he used to be in the military, and he was in the bathroom, and another 
fan from the show walked in and his nose was broken. He was just like profusely bleeding and, you know, injured. And the military military guy was like, hey, I've, you know, treated injuries like this before. And so I don't know what he did specifically, but he reset the guy's nose. The guy was like, cool, thanks. And then just immediately ran back into the pit. Uh, That's it. That's all it was. Cool stuff. Rock on. See you.